At Aureli Kindergarten, there's a playhouse, one that's something of a metaphor for what goes on here. For though the structure's been provided by the adults, the children have made the house their own, decorating it as they've seen it should be, right down to the flower garden on the roof. Here at Aureli, children have agency over their learning, and play is at the heart of that. We have as much as we can a free play environment, Within that we have quite structured interactions with each child, but the children are free to explore, um, take their learning where they want to take it, learn in ways that they want to learn, at their own pace, in their own way, in ways that have meaning to them. This morning in the outdoor area, a group of boys are involved in imaginative play. For weeks now, they've been earnestly planning and developing adventures, some of it involving research on weaponry. And now they've co-opted dinosaurs. I mean, the dinosaurs have just become part of their adventures and so they've co-opted them. So every day they will collect their dinosaurs and they have some books that they are quite familiar with themselves that they like to use and share with other children. Triceratops. Triceratops. And they take their dinosaurs on adventures and look at the books, they read, they think about what this is, they find the same dinosaurs. They will tell anybody who stands still long enough to listen about what they're working on. And the dinosaurs go on adventures in the forest and have fun and play, so it's all imaginative play, cooperative play, and all linking to literacy as well. Links to literacy occur naturally here, and today Jackson's developing hers at the baking table. What do we need to make a banana cake? Bananas. Bananas. Good thinking, 99, so how can we write bananas? Don't know. Have a I think. B. 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 Where's that B. tricky B? Jackson's cake baking has arisen quite spontaneously. Amongst the resources, an empty cake mix box has taken her interest, and she figures she can make her own version of the cake. So she's opened a planning template on the iPad, and with a couple of friends and teachers' help, she's hard at work. Now the next sound is na. Mm. Uh, Raymond, could you tell Jackson? Mm. Fun. Now there's another ah, 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 ah. Aye. Aye, good thinking. The Banana. agency that children feel here means that they're not only involved in planning their learning, they also see themselves as teachers. Children and teachers work in a reciprocal fashion, so that while Raymond is learning about making a cake, he's also sharing his knowledge of how words are made. And Raymond knows how to spell egg. Thank you, Raymond. <laughs> he wrote egg. Thank you, Parvin. We've got bananas. Oh, bananas. Sugar. Sugar. What else could my cake mm. need? Strawberries. Strawberries. Are we going to have strawberries in our nana cake? No. Are you sure? Once the ingredients are settled upon, Jackson describes the method the bakers will follow while Paula records. And then finally, Jackson takes a photograph of herself, which goes into the action plan that will begin with the gathering of ingredients. Then I said, well, would you like to do the shopping? Because we don't have these ingredients. So someone needs to do the shopping. I can do that, she said. And I knew her mother would be fine with it. So um, I said, well, I've got some petty cash. Where are we going to put it? She goes, oh, I need a purse. I need a purse. I need a purse. After a moment's thought, Jackson set off to construct a purse. The more I teach, the more I see how incredibly competent the children are. The way they use working theories, as we call them from Te Whareke, they are constantly working through these things and finding new ways. And so they can be so innovative. Jackson's purse, she wants to make a purse. So we'll have a teacher idea of how that could be done. But give them just the support they need, but let them follow their own plan. Let them think about what they want to achieve, how they want to achieve it, and give them space and time to do that. And they come up with the most amazing thinking, the most amazing creativity, imagination. It's just extraordinary. Next day, after the shopping expedition with Mum, Jackson and her friends are ready to make the cake. While out in the sandpit, some of the dinosaur boys have returned to an activity they invented a couple of weeks ago, involving experimentation with levers. They try different things, like someone will try a really big run up from inside the kindergarten and come belting out really fast to see if that makes the object at the end go higher. They've learned very quickly 
that they have to move out of the way because what goes up must come down, so they're working a lot with gravity there. They would try different things, water, toys, sand, and see if the different objects move in different ways. And they've tried using different pivot points, tried moving the plank backwards and forwards to see if that makes a difference. Oh. The teacher doesn't just keep an eye on safety here. She's feeding in language, describing what's happening, so that while they experiment, the boys build on vocabulary around leverage, force and power. She helps them make connections too, so that they formalise their thinking about what's happening. Even though the play is free, interactions can be quite structured. The interactions we have with the children are structured for a purpose. So we will interact with this child in one way, this child in another way, to draw out the very best in them and draw out their own understanding of themselves as capable and confident learners and explorers. At the other end of the sandpit, Filippo has been experimenting with water and dyes, but now he's come up with a new idea and he's headed off to the carpentry table. He decided to put holes in it. I need holes in my bottle and he was struggling a wee bit but he finally worked out that he could use the hammer and nails and put holes in his bottle. And then when he squeezed the bottle the water came out which was fantastic so he put a whole lot of holes in his bottle. But by that time he'd squeezed so much water out, it was, he was squeezing and squeezing and no water was coming out. So he looked at me and said I can blow it, I can blow it up. So he blew up the bottle, blew the bottle, and the water was forced out the holes in the side, which he thought was pretty fantastic. So then he went to show everybody, and that led on to another couple of children trying out the same idea, and he took on that teaching role. Meanwhile, news of Jackson's baking has spread, and plenty of helpers have gathered to mix the ingredients. Hey Jackson, could you teach Tumsiel how to squish his one? Jackson's leading here. She's thought carefully about the baking and has the ingredients and process in her head. And she keeps an eye on her friends, making sure that everyone has a job and knows how to do it. Given the chance, you realise how capable they are at working together, working collaboratively and taking that responsibility for each other and recognising what's going on with other children within the group or even outside the group and taking on that role for themselves of actually I can do something here, I can support this person, I can teach this person, I can help this person, and they do. Often learning from others happens less formally. Filippo's breath-powered squirter has prompted some of the smaller children to experiment themselves, and once they've discovered that making the bottled squirter is tricky for smaller people, they've adapted the idea, blowing through tubes instead and it doesn't take long before the discovery has a new and fun application. <laughs> Through all of this enthusiastic experimentation and creativity, there's time for reflection. Later today or tomorrow, Jackson and her teacher will write about the baking, considering what Jackson's learned and what she might want to attempt next and teachers reflect throughout the day as well, sharing their observations about groups and individuals and planning for future learning. That's part of what we do as a teaching team is just discuss what's going on, what's going on with our planning, what's going on with the children's learning, what we've seen, but once a term will come together more formally and identify some goals, and these goals might actually come from home, so it might be that mum's working on something at home that we want to pick up on and work with as well, and then we'll draw out some teaching strategies that we think will help. Uh, but the children can set their own goals, they have very clear ideas of what they want to learn and they can identify their own strategies. Yeah.